Hey, what's up everybody? So welcome to another video. I was going to do a completely different video for um, this Friday, but uh, instead, because of uh, some really nice circumstances that happen, uh, it's going to be all about this band again, Econoline Crush, um, one of the greatest Canadian bands for sure, and uh, very underplayed and underrated in this day and age, though anyone that's grown up in the in the 90s remembers this band, um, especially Canadians from alt-rock radio, but they also got some play in uh, America. I remember they were on the Alternative Songs chart um, back when The Devil You Know was coming out, and uh, they maintained, you know, getting airplay for a few years, and they definitely appeared on some video game soundtracks, I think, for some NHL hockey games and some uh, Sled Storm or something for the PlayStation. Anyway. Probably some racing games, too. Can you imagine racing around to some of this band's uh, music? Anyway, I just saw them live, and uh, it just reignited a whole love for them, as it did last time I saw them live, which was like 15 years ago or so. Um, I've loved everything this band has ever done, and uh, they definitely need to get some vinyl out there. And uh, Trevor, I mean, you know, he knows that and everything, but uh, anyway... Um, so we're talking about The People Have Spoken, uh, which is a EP from 2011, and I was reading the liner notes, and I guess they did a Indie, a go -Go, Indiegogo fund, um, raiser. So, you know, this is kind of the age where a lot of bands were doing Kickstarters and all that kind of stuff. So I guess it came out of that. I completely missed that, though. Um, this is the only Econline Crush project that when it dropped, I had no idea about it. And, um, you know, when I found out about it a year or two later, I was just kicking myself. Like, how did I miss this? And even now, you know, 12 years later, it, it just hits me that, you know, these are three of the best songs the band ever recorded. Uh, two of them I would put in my probably top five, but definitely top ten. Um... It's kind of, uh, it kind of straddles the line between the sound that they had kind of established and become really known for in the 90s, and mixed with the kind of, um, chunky kind of alternative rock stuff that they were starting to do in the early 2000s with Brand New History, and I know a lot of fans don't like that one as much as Affliction and The Devil You Know, but, um... I would put it almost on the level as Devil You Know. I think maybe because it was the first one I ever heard and also because I don't mind that polished rock so uh, sound rather and I really like how this band incorporated it. Um, but yeah, I think what really marries all the eras together for this fabulous EP, because this is, this is incredible, um, is just getting a lot of the original, well, not the original band, because it was Trevor and two guys out of Seattle, and they dropped out before Purge even came on, but, um, basically two, basically some members of the established, you know, the, the, the golden era, I guess you could say, and that's with Robbie Morfitt on guitar, and, um, of course, the late Ziggy Sigmund on guitar as well, and he plays um, bass and Moog. Is it Moog or Moog? I can never... It's Moog, right? Anyway, so Ziggy's on here. Um, he So Ziggy, of course, for those who aren't in the know, Ziggy joined on right before The Devil You Know, and I think he was quite instrumental in, in writing some of the material for that. Um, especially All That You Are, which became their big hit and was a huge crossover, and I think probably went down as their, their biggest charting song. I remember hearing it a lot, and not just on rock radio. It was kind of like Incubus's Drive or Filters Take a Picture or those many Sugar Ray songs that don't have uh, big riffs in them. Uh, so it got played on a lot of pop radio. And, um, but, you know, the artistry didn't suffer, and, um, it definitely was the poppiest song on Devil You Know, but, uh, you know, the quality didn't suffer. I mean, that's one of the most consistent records I could ever think of. Um, all, is it 11 tracks? Yeah, all 11 tracks are just absolutely stellar, like, you're not gonna want to press skip. 
But uh, yeah, so he helped Trevor write that. Uh, I think he got a co-write credit. And of course, you can hear him playing all over that record. And he did stay on for Brand New History. Uh, Robbie Morfitt played on um, material as early as Purge, which came out in 1994. And he stayed on for Affliction, which is an amazing record. Their first full length, Purge was an EP. And then The Devil You Know. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's 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 amazing because he dropped off before Brand New History, but it's amazing that you know these guys are back in this era, and um, I'm not sure if we'll hear any Ziggy on the the new upcoming record when the Devil Drives, or uh, if if Robbie will contribute. They're not in the touring band right now. The band is currently touring the West Coast, um, but you know who knows? I mean, maybe Trevor got some old alum to to help him out. So, um, yeah, anyway, obviously Trevor Hurst on vocals, Ziggy Sigmund and Robbie play guitar, uh, Ziggy also plays some bass, Franklin Vanderbilt is on drums, and Rise Fulber is uh, programming in synths, and he did some uh, producing and mixing and programming, I believe, on, uh, ooh, I believe it was Affliction. Anyway, so yeah, anyway, this is kind of like the, uh, kind of a victory lap for the band, and um, this was, I paid an arm and a leg for this on Discogs some years ago, but now you can get it on Bandcamp um, from Econoline Crush, you can get it more officially, because Discogs, you know, there's always that worry, much like Amazon and eBay, um, but yeah, I think... This might be the most I've ever paid for a record, so I don't really want to say how much I paid, because <laughs> it's three songs. But, uh, I mean, I, I missed the campaign when it all started. Um, I don't know what I was doing in... Well, this came out in 2011, so I assume the campaign probably started in 2010, maybe 2009. Some of these things took a long time, uh, definitely in the age of um, Kickstarter and... Uh, websites to that effect that could help the band um, fund their stuff through their fans and that. Um, yeah, and it's pretty cool that for an EP it has a little gatefold and, you know, it's got all the friends and um, friends and family and well-wishers of the band and there's pictures of the band in there. Um, it was produced and uh, it wasn't just the programming and synths by Rise Fulber. I hope I'm saying his first name right. Uh, I've never known how to say that name, but uh, it's also produced, recorded, and mixed by him. East Van Records. This was the first and I think only uh, release on that label. And, um, yeah, I mean, what else can you really say? I mean, it, it, it opens with Thorn, which I always forgot because I had a digital copy when I... Uh, when I first got this, when I first discovered it, my friend and I were camping, and he said, oh, did you know that Econoline Crush dropped this uh, earlier this year? And I was like, what? Like, usually I'm on, like, for any band, big or small, as long as they're one that I like or love, and I love Econoline Crush, and I was like, what, they dropped new music? What? And then he started playing it, and it was just over his crappy... Um, Coors Light speakers or something that we took camping that were like, ah, eh, if it gets rained on or ruined, who cares? But uh, even then, it was hitting me. And uh, But yeah, I thought Stay With Me was the first song, but it obviously isn't. Um, anyway, Thorn opens it up, and Thorn has, you know, some amazing sampling going on and uh, and really sounds that like that old industrial sound. Uh, from, you know, 96, 97, that was so popular, and it, it does bring to mind, like, Affliction-era writing, uh, whereas Stay With Me and I'm Afraid have more kind of poppy, catchy writing that's more in line with uh, Brand New History, kind of a, akin to that alternative rock sound that they were going for when they dropped Make It Right and, and Trash and Flamethrower and all those great songs off that album. Um... So yeah, the the songwriting and the, kind of the catchy choruses and that are more indicative to to that era. Um, but I think like those two are my favorites, and Thorn is absolutely amazing. All three songs are probably in my top twenty Econoline Crush songs, and uh, to hear 
them play Thorn live. I, I said to my friend, I said, uh, if they play anything off the People Have Spoken EP, uh, People Have Spoken Volume 1, excuse me, <laughs> uh, I'll eat my hat. And uh, that's probably why I'm not wearing a hat for this video. Anyway, it took me, uh, took me some time to, to choke it down. I had to, had to drink a lot of beer that night. But uh, I probably shouldn't have made a, a, a guess like that. But there was nothing on setlist.fm, so... Because we there there had already been a few shows played by the time we saw them, and I'm like, oh, maybe I'll check out setlist.fm and see what they were uh, playing on the tour. And then it's like, oh, I there's nothing on there, so I'll just go in fresh. But uh, Which is fine for a band like this, because it's like, I know every single song they did like the back of my hand uh, you know i i'm even familiar with ignite now which is which is nice um and you know i can confidently say that they don't have a song i dislike um i just don't really like the re-recording of you don't know what it's like but i said that in the other video anyway um but yeah anyway this is a buried treasure this this out of like any release really brings home what this whole series of videos is about um the Forgotten Favorites videos because, you know, I, I don't think this sold many copies and uh, if you are watching and you know and like a Conline Crush or even if you don't, you know, I implore you, you should go buy this because, um, yeah, it, it's incredible. It sounded really good. Um, it didn't sound too, like, digital or anything. I feel like my copy came from a radio station because it says Canada 2011 alternative industrial they're still using that term and I, I drop that term all the time when I'm talking about a conline crush music but yeah it comes on this cool splatter vinyl white red and black and it's got their uh, I guess that was kind of the logo they were using at the time at least not not anymore they've kind of gone back to that simple font and then uh, on the other side label it says East Van. So you get Thorn on its own side, um, because it was kind of the single at the time. I'm not sure if it got airplay. Hopefully it did in their hometown at least. But I'm not sure if it was really picked up anywhere. But it was a single. And then uh, the two other songs follow suit. And I mean those songs, if they came out at a different time, they could have been a huge, huge hit. But uh, it was not to be, um, but all three are absolutely amazing. And um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a forgotten favorite. So if you're an Econoline Crush fan, please sound off in the comments. And uh, we'll see you in the next video, which was the one I was going to make initially. But I've been so excited for Econoline Crush, uh, you know, especially coming off the highs of the show that we saw. Uh, you know, it's been three nights already, but it's still like... The hype is there, the the feeling of elation, and uh, that's what you want from a live show. And and uh, Trevor just seems like such an amazing human being. I got to talk to him for a little bit, like thirty seconds or so, but um, maybe more. I don't know. Just it's like I, there was so much I wanted to say, and then I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I really like your music, man. No, just kidding. But um, yeah. So sound off in the comments, and uh, yeah. I'm coming right back with another video very soon. Peace and love, everyone, and enjoy the music.